Welcome back to Fast Market on the TV Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment. That's going to be Andy Swan, the co-founder of Like Folio. Thanks for being here again, Andy. Yeah, no problem. Love it. All right. So Starbucks reporting earnings today. The stock's down nearly 40 percent so far this year. Is are you guys not seeing positive data? Because it seems like everybody stopped going to Starbucks, maybe because uh, this stock has just been beaten down. They continue to raise prices. They've got some union issues. But what kind of uh, sentiment data are you guys seeing out of like Folio? Well, Starbucks actually starting to get a lot going for it for the first time in quite a while, according to our data. Um, one of the primary drivers, you know, a lot of people returning to the office. We see that up 70% uh, year over year in terms of people talking about returning to the office. And with that comes the need or the demand for caffeine consumption. We see uh, consumer demand for caffeine at all-time highs, really moving significantly higher over the last quarter and on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, you know, people really love their caffeine, and that's benefiting uh, Starbucks. From what we can tell, um, we're starting to see a little turnaround in demand uh, for Starbucks uh, products. The number of people talking about going through the drive-through. Uh, visiting the store, and even uh, downloading and reloading their Starbucks app. And so uh, when we see these things kind of come together after what has been a considerable uh, downturn, uh, it, can, it can provide a real opportunity for investors. We see uh, Starbucks outpacing its competitor, Dunkin' Donuts, in terms of uh, consumer demand increases. We see uh, p potentially stealing market share in that regard. Uh, staying at the, about the same consumer happiness levels as, as the rest of the competition, but engage, getting people re-engaged uh, with their store in a really big way. And we think that the, uh, the mobile app adoption, the digital element of this is a, uh, is a really big driver. And Starbucks really just leading the pack in terms of creating that easy, uh, consistent experience for the consumer that blends both the digital and physical uh, economy together. So overall, you know, I have to say it's been a while since we've been able to say this, but I think uh, Starbucks really uh, seems to be on the turnaround track uh, in a really nice way. Kevin, you got a question here for Andy? Maybe we lost Kevin here. Uh, yeah, so Andy, I kind of wanted to hit on that because it seems like the digital payment space uh, really ramped up during COVID. Uh, that's been that's that's one one of their uh, their biggest takeaways here is their uh, th their integration of that that portion of their business. But then also it engages the consumer more. But what I'm seeing is that I'm filling up my uh, my the balance on my card after a couple drinks just because the prices are going so high. Are they susceptible to this, these inflationary pressures where people are going to go, hey, you know, a cup of coffee isn't two bucks anymore. It's five, six, seven, eight dollars. Will that negatively affect them? Yeah, I think that's the biggest risk um, for Starbucks, both in the short term and the long term. And it's really something like Folio doesn't have a lot of insight into. So we can see that uh, demand for caffeine is up. Demand for Starbucks is up. More people are going to the store. They're downloading the app. They're loading their balance on the Starbucks card and they're spending money there. But what are the costs that are going in uh, to that equation to serve those people? We don't know that side of the equation. So the profitability uh, is definitely in question. And some of the union unionization efforts that are happening at Starbucks are gaining some steam and are a threat to uh, future uh, cost constraints. So um, while we see what we can see at Like Folio looks really good for Starbucks for the first time in a while, and that is a reversal and positive demand momentum. But the cost side of the equation is something that we kind of have to wait and see uh, from the company itself. Andy, when, when Howard Schultz came back in early April, he put out a statement to employees. I'm going to read it re real quick. He said, I'm returning to the company to work with all of you to design the next Starbucks, an evolution of our company deep with purpose, where we each have agency and where we work together to create a positive impact in the world. Is, it, is this as simple as 
Should investors think that Howard Schultz is going to get this right? You guys have already listed all the problems that, that they have. Russia is, is 10 percent. Russia and Ukraine. China's 20 percent. Unions are another problem, obviously. Is it enough to just trust that Howard Schultz will get it right in his, what is it now, his third return to the company? Well, I mean, when you, when you have somebody with a successful track record like he has, um, yeah. you know, you, you you tend to bet on that jockey, um, and I I see no problem with that. He he has a um, you know a history of fantastic execution, and there's no reason to think he can't do it again. Um, you know, the company's expanding its footprint. Uh, you think you see a Starbucks everywhere you go, but somehow they're going to add. Uh, tens of thousands of new stores between now and 2030 around the world. Um, you know, this is a, this is a company that I think investors would be wise to look at. It's one of those companies you can't see a way that it stays down. Um, you know, it's not like a high tech growth name. This is a a almost consumer staple at this point. And I think uh, the the headwinds of 2020 and 2021 are starting to become tailwinds for the company. Yeah, and Andy, when I look at the, the chart on this, and I mentioned it's down uh, basically about 36, 37% so far this year, all-time highs of 126 just about nine months ago. So going into this, you know, it's oversold on a technical basis at this point. Do you guys have a positive reading going into earnings on this then? Yeah, positive reading going into earnings. And, you know, I will say I like, you know, if we're going to start thinking about a trade, I, I like going out longer term on this because I do think that the, the near term, um, you know, choppiness of and, and supply constraints could be a little bit of a problem. And I, I really want to see what they say there. But from a consumer demand perspective, Starbucks definitely in the driver's seat. All right. Great stuff. As always, Andy, appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, you too. All right, that's Andy Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio, joining us, breaking down the data on Starbucks, Kevin. See